Hello. Welcome. Let me, let me fuss with my phone a little bit. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon, wherever you're at. Welcome to Raincross Farms Makery. I'm Robin. Behind the camera and behind the computer, you can see but can't hear, is Bill. And we are Raincross Farms Makery. We are right outside of Lewiston, Idaho. And I have a, we like to do craft tutorials and give you lots of ideas and inspire you to be creative. So that's what we're gonna do today. I have a fun craft. It's not really a craft. It's an, it's, it's a crafty thing, but it's, it will help you organize yourself. And it just kind of makes life a little more fun. So if you are watching us live, even if you're not watching us live, say hello. Pop on if you've never watched us before. Let us know you're new. Let us know where you're watching from. And we will say hello. We'll give you a shout out. If you're watching the replay, comment hashtag replay. We get just as much credit from Facebook if you watch the replay as if you do live. But we would love it if you would love our page. Give us some hearts or a thumbs up. If you would follow our page, Raincross Farms Makery, we're trying to get a thousand followers we're we're, st we're starting out but we would love to hit that 1000 mark and if you would be so kind as to share our video into your feed or to a specific friend that you think likes crafting or a craft group that you belong to we would certainly appreciate it that helps us out so let's i've got a lot to do so let's let's walk and talk at the same time so let me pull up, let me pull up the live on my phone so I can see it. And let us know you're here. So what we're going to do, as you can see, my table is kind of a mess and my, that, my entire craft room is kind of a mess and my pantry's a mess. So here's a fun way to help you organize it and to, to make it in make spending time there enjoyable so i have lots of little containers so maybe you have pantry containers like this or even keeping craft supplies in or maybe you've got containers like this these are from the dollar store dollar tree or containers like this or like this does this look familiar you've got all these little containers or maybe you have collected some glass ones. Here's one that I actually chalked on for Valentine's Day, XOXO. Or one of my favorites, this big old jar. I think I got this from Walmart. Well, to help you organize your things, I'm going to show you a set of transfers that are awesome. So the first one is called Everyday Labels, and it is just little outlines little frames and then I have two of these I have the pantry labels which are like the flour the sugar the pasta all the some of the it's not all the things many of the things in your pantry that you might be putting in some of these containers and these are designed to fit inside the frame so it makes them look really cute they also have one for crap for your craft supplies. So there's like writing tools, sparkly bits, paint supplies, sticky stuff, all kinds of things like that. Ink, paste, chalk transfers. So I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can use these to make these work for you. Whether you're doing it, whether you want to put it on some plastic containers, some glass containers. I've even got some other ideas too. So let's get to moving let's see who's here marty from texas hello welcome stacy from texas hello you guys having a cold what well, texas is in the house vicky's from houston are you guys are you cold there i heard there was a cold snap going on hello tracy welcome awesome glad to have you so give me some hearts if if organizing is is something that you dread like I do so I'm gonna show the first thing I'm gonna show you I have a lot so I have a list I want to show you how you can use these transfers so here is a glass jar 
I'm going to make, I'm going to put this on and I'm going to put it on permanently. I'm going to actually etch this into the glass. So let me show you how to do that. So let's see, which one of these do we want? Let's take, let's take this square one. I don't know if you have ever done glass etching. 50, 53, that's not cold. I must be getting wrong information or maybe that was just yesterday. Apparently, apparently things change on a dime. Okay, so our transfers are self-adhesive, so they're sticky backed meant to be reusable over and over and over 10 to 12 times guaranteed by the company but if you take good care of them you can get more of that more than that out of it okay so because this is sticky and because this is really smooth and slick this transfer is going to stick really really well which is good and bad if it sticks really well you're probably not going to have any bleeding issues with your paste bleeding through but you might have trouble pulling off the transfer when you're done. Hey, Jackie, good evening. That is just so strange to know that it's morning here and evening in the UK. So what I did is I fuzzed this. So I just put some lint on the sticky part and where you see the screen, where you see through, dog hair, where you see through, that is a fine mesh screen. So I'm going to, let's see. I'm just going to center this, try to center, I'm trying to get up above it, and I'm making sure it is down snug, no bubbles, and I am going to, I'm going to use etching cream, I'm going to etch the background frame, and then when it is etched, then I'm going to paste on top of that, and I'm thinking it will look very cool. So etching cream. I don't sell it, but I got this craft store, probably Walmart or Joann's. You can get it online. Any craft store would have it. I like Armor Etch. I've never used, I know there's other brands out there. I've never used them, so I really can't speak to how, how good they are, but I have had great success with this, so I'm not interested in trying something else. Okay, so this is just a really thick paste. It is a chemical, so you want to be careful. If you're a really messy crafter, you might want to use some gloves. But if you are, if you're pretty careful, it's not, it's not going to instantly eat your skin up if you get it on you. If you get it on you, just wash it off real quick. So this, like I said, it's, it's a thick paste, and I'm just going to take a glob of that and then I'm going to use a spouncer it's like a sponge pouncer and I'm going to take that and I'm just going to basically pounce it through that screen I want it kind of thick so I may even need to put some more on there and this is going to react with the glass and actually etch it so this is permanent there is no taking this off and I am actually going to put a little more on here because okay. you can't get it too thick. Now I want to make sure I stay on my stencil because if I get it onto the glass, it's going to start etching away at that glass. Hey, Patty, both Patties are here. Did, are you guys are you guys in cahoots? Both of my Patties came in at the same time. It's a patty party, which is better than a pity party. I had one of those yesterday. Okay, so I'm just, I'm, I'm spouncing it, pouncing it in there, and then I'm going to just let it set for a few minutes. I'm going to come back and I'm going to pounce it again. Now, not all glass will take etching. There are certain kinds of... Um, Certain, I know certain kinds of Pyrex, the old original Pyrex, you can't etch on. So what I recommend is if you have a piece that you, that you want to etch on and you don't want to waste your time, take a little bit of the etching cream and uh, make a little dot on the bottom and see if after a few minutes, if it etches. 
uh, then you're good. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. You're not hurting anything if it doesn't take the etching. You've just wasted your time. Okay, so I'm going to let that, it's not going to drip, so I'm just going to let that sit there. And I'm going to come back to it in a couple of minutes. So remind me, and I'm going to move on to my next method. So I'm going to throw that away. I'm going to close this up so it doesn't dry out. Maybe balance that there. Okay, any questions so far? Hi, Cynthia, welcome from Pennsylvania. Lots of East Coast and lots of Texas. Okay, the next thing I wanted to show you is if you wanted to paste on a plastic container. I would do paste. It's not going to be permanent, um, but it... Our pastes are smudge and budge proof once they're dry. So unless you are scratching at it or getting it wet constantly, it's gonna it's gonna stay. Did we forget our lights? Forgot Be some careful, lights. don't yeah, blind you. Some lights okay, on. there we go. Oh, there Turn you on are. the lights. It's so okay. Dark. okay, so I'm gonna do something similar on this one. Um, let's see. I'm going to. Let's do let's do one of these open ones. So some of these are open and they're just the outside frame and uh, I mean they're the inside and some of them are just an outline. So I'm going to again I'm going to fuzz this because the plat it's going to stick really well to the plastic and I don't want to I don't want to twist or or distort my transfer stretch it out when I go to pull it off because it's sticking so hard. So I'm just putting a little bit of lint on the sticky part and I'm going to lay this down. Okay, this container I think I got, I think I got this and I've got a, wouldn't you know, I've got a dog hair under there. Oh, that's not, that's not a dog hair. I don't know what that is. Anyway. I think I got this at a Dollar General or a Family Dollar. It was a whole set of them. So I'm putting this on. I'm pushing it down so there's no air bubbles. And I'm going to use our paste. This is Chalkology paste. So it's chalk in paste form. And I'm going to take a little bit on my squeegee. Now this is smudge and budge proof once it's dry. There, you know what? That is that is part of the silk screen. So I'm just taking my squeegee and I'm putting the paste, dragging it over that screen, pushing it onto the surface. So I've got that done. I'm going to take off the excess, set that aside, and watch this. This is peel and reveal. Let me find a corner, but I'm not going to pull from the corner. I'm going to go to an to a side. Look at that. Is that not fancy? I know you could do this with your Cricut, but this was just so much easier. So let me... Okay, so I'm going to put this down. I'm going to put it on a dish drying mat. Get some of this stuff out of the way. I'm just going to put this on a dish drying mat. And I will clean it up in a moment. And while I'm waiting, I'm just going to spray it with water. So that paste doesn't dry in my screen. That helps me when I go to clean. It's easier to clean when I do that. Okay, so I've got a little bit of... Smear, so I'm cleaning that up. So I'm just going to take my quick dry tool and dry that up really well. So this would work on opaque plastic, plastic that's not see through or see through, doesn't matter. But I'm just giving it a dry so that I can show you it's not going to smudge or budge. But again, it's only semi-permanent. If I wanted to take it off, 
I could do that. I could apply water and scrape it off and scrub it off and I could put on something different. Feeling that it's dry. Keep a watch on my time because I got a lot of stuff I want to show you. All with these transfers. Whole set of Tupperware. Oh, well, pace yourself. Start small. And there's a it's a hair in there. Okay, so see, smudge and budge proof. It's dry. It's not coming off. It's not smudging, unless I tried to take it off. So let's see. What are we going to put in this container? Um, we are probably that's a nice big flour or should I do flour, flour, sugar, chips? Okay. Let's put let's put flour in here. Okay, so this is from our pantry labels, and if I can, I cut them apart. So this is from our pantry label set. Again, I'm going to fuzz it, especially because some of it's going to touch that paste I just put down, and I don't want the sticky part to pull that paste up until it's completely set. So I'm fuzzing it, I'm just putting a little bit of lint on the back and I'm going to center this. Now you, I'm just using, I'm just using black and white. You could use whatever colors you decorate with. Okay, so again, I'm only gonna push down where those letters are. I don't, don't want to push down something under there. Yep, yeah, that's a hair. I think I need to uh, clean my fuzzing towel. Because it's picking up dog hairs. Okay. So it's dog hair? It, well, I don't know. It's not my hair. Not hers, not no. Dog hair. Okay, so same thing. Although I could do it with a different color. I'm just using my black paste. And I am trying to stay on that transfer. Although at this point I could wipe it off if I if I got a little over enthusiastic and got some where it didn't belong. I could clean it off. So I'm going to scrape off the excess, put it back in my jar. And I'm going to clean up my hands because I've got some paste on me. Okay. And again, I'm going to start from a corner, go to an edge and pull that off. And look at that. Is that not fancy? And looks very professional. And you can see I did kind of pull off a little bit of that, a little bit of that line, but I can lay it back down and fix it. Uh, uh. <laughs> this container, I believe it came from a Dollar General or a Family Dollar. One of those dollar, I know it wasn't Dollar Tree, but any of those dollar stores have plastic containers. Uh, Walmart has plastic containers. So again, that's, that is dried, so that is smudge and budge proof until I go to take it off. So if, if you had to wash, if you had to, uh, if you had to clean it, I would just do it with a barely damp rag and just lightly over this. Um, if you soak it in water, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rehydrate and it's going to come back. But is that not fancy for your pantry? Okay, so one down. Let me put that aside. Let me go back to our etching. If you missed this, I have put etching cream on one of our transfers on this big old glass jar. And I am I'm just spouncing it. It's been on for oh maybe 10 minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. I want to leave it on maybe 10 to 15 minutes total, but I'm just kind of 
just bouncing it around. You could do this with a, an old paintbrush that's kind of ragged because when you got done with it, your paintbrush would end up ragged. But I found these little spouncing brushes. They're like sponge pouncers at Walmart, I think, and they work really well. So I'm just pushing through the etching cream. And this is the etching cream I used, Armor Etch. I'm not affiliated in any way. It just has worked for me. Okay, what's next on my list? Hey, paste a tag. Okay, these transfers also work with our tag minis. They are a perfect fit. So let's see, let's do, let's do this one. And again, fuzz, I'm gonna spray this so it doesn't dry. Help me when I go to clean it. Now there's not a lot of adhesive because most of this is screen. So I'm going to place that down right there and push down. So where you can see the white, there is no sticky. That's all screen. So I wanna make sure the green part is down and adhering. And I'm going to, again, go in with black and completely cover that up. Sometimes your containers or your baskets don't lend themselves well to actually chalking on them. This is a, a kind of a hack. You can make a little tag and tie it on And then you've got your basket labeled or your, your container labeled. Okay, scraping off the excess, putting it back in the jar, checking my fingers, and I'm gonna peel this up. Ooh, there's my frame. Pretty pretty, don't you think? Very fancy. Okay, now I'm going to dry that. I'm just, I'm just spraying this with water because I don't, if my paste dries in the screen before I clean it, it's not a big deal. It just makes it harder for me to clean. So why do things that are gonna make, that are gonna be harder? So if I keep the paste damp, it, uh, it's easier to clean when I'm ready. So I'm just giving this a dry. And before I paste over it again with another transfer, I do want to make sure it is really dry. So I'm going to I'm going to let this sit aside and I'm going to go back to I'm going to go back to this. Yes, Patty, you're going to have to Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. You'd asked about the container. That container was a dollar store. This, these I sell in my shop in a set of six, I believe. They come six to a pack. I had a pack of them somewhere. I believe there's six in a pack. They're really handy for, for gifts or for decor. Okay, so last spouncing. And I'm going to open this back up because any of that, any of that um, etching cream that I haven't used, I can reuse. And I mean, I can reuse it. If I can scrape it off, I can reuse it. So I'm scraping off my sponge. I'm going to stick that in water. And I'm going to take one of my squeegees and just scrape off the excess etching cream, putting it back in my jar. Now, I will tell you, when you put it back in your jar, there are little bits of dried cream, which isn't, which isn't bad, but when you keep putting it back, eventually this gets kind of crunchy. So don't get too big of a container of this, or halfway through it, it, it will be just filled with crunchy bits. Okay, so this I'm going to 
peel off. Okay, so that's now, still the cream now that is at. still the cream you're looking at. That is not the etching. But before I deal with this cream, I'm going to deal with my, with my transfer because this is precious to me. So our transfers are not made to work with etching cream. And it ought to be honest, it would probably void your warranty with the company if you told them you used etching cream. But I have used etching cream numerous times and it has not adversely affected my transfers at all. So I can tell you from experience, these transfers hold up to etching cream, but I do clean them off right away. So I'm gonna start with either a paper towel or this is a, um, it's called a Swedish dishcloth. It's like a reusable paper towel. Okay. So I'm starting with this to get the bulk of that goop off and then I'm gonna switch over to my board eraser. These I sell in my shop. They are basically chemical free magic erasers and they work great with these transfers. They just, I don't know what they do, that kind of grit, grabs that paste and pulls it off of the screen. So I'm gonna do front and back because I want all of that etching cream off of this. And this is exactly how I would clean these with paste. I just really wanted to get to this right away because that etching cream has, I don't even know what chemical it is, but I don't want that chemical on my screen any longer than it needs to be. Okay, so I've got, got that dry, I'm gonna let it air dry. So this is, this is a layer of etching cream and I'm going to clean it off. Hi, Carmen. Okay. I've got, I just, I would normally do this in my sink. So I brought my sink here. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to rinse this off in water. Like I said, I'd ordinarily do this in my sink. On the camera that seems to disappear when you get it wet, but when yeah. it dries, it shows oh, up yeah. a whole lot better. Okay. So let me set this aside. And you want to use a lot of water because you want to get that etching cream off because it will continue to etch. It, it might be diluted, but you want to get it all off. And then there, can you see? Can you see where it etched that label? And that is permanent. There's no taking that off. So let me get this dry. And then we will paste over that. Okay. I'm going to make sure it's dry. I'm going to... Dry it with my drying tool just to make sure it's dry. Okay, so what might we put in here? Cereal? Chips? Does that have Coffee? a sealing lid to it? No, it doesn't seal. So it needs to be something that doesn't require um, pasta. Let's put go. pasta in here. Okay, so I've got my little, you know what? Those strings are coming from this. Put dog biscuits in it. Ooh, dog biscuits. I don't have that. Oh, treats. I do have treats. Let's make it treats. Doggo treats. Treats. That's better. And so this one says treats. And we could put dog biscuits in it. Dog because biscuits. our dogs are spoiled. Okay, so again, I'm going to fuzz this because I don't want to have trouble having to stretch my transfer when I pull it up. And I'm going to lay it right over that etched surface and center it as best as I can. Fifteen minutes. Hey, hello, Carmen. Welcome. Okay. Black paste again. Again, we have we have a huge variety of colors. You can use whatever you, your decor is. Okay. 
So I am doing this with paste. There we go. Fancy, don't you love it? I love it. I love it. Let me spray that. Now, because I did this with paste, I could take it off later. And I'm going to show you on something in a moment how you can take it off. So I could, I could trade this up. I could change this out to cookies. I could trade it out to pasta by taking this off. I can also, I could also have a permanent option. And let me show you that in just a moment. Okay, so I've got that one done. Joy is joining us from Northern California. Awesome, welcome Joy. Okay, so this, let's go back to this one. This one is on one of our wood tags and I just pasted it down there and I don't want I don't want the transfer, the sticky transfer to pull this up. So because it's wood, I'm going to wax it. So I'm going to apply a thin layer of surface wax. I sell this in my shop. It's currently out of stock, but you could use um, paste wax from a hardware store. It, it smells awful. This is odorless, but you could use like uh, Johnson's paste wax or Minwax paste wax. So I'm just putting a light coat on and I'm buffing it off and that will protect my paint from being pulled up by and grabbed too hard by my sticky transfer. Now I didn't want to use I didn't want to use this on the plastic or the glass, but I can do it on the wood. So let's see, what should I put? Um you know what? I have a big old tub of chalk transfers. That's what, that's what we call these. These are chalk transfers. We call them transfers because they transfer your design onto your surface. So again, fuzzing. 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 And place it down. Center it. And this time I'm going to chalk with white. We have more than just black and white, but I'm going to chalk this with our white paste. Same method. Scrape off the excess, put it back in my jar lift my transfer and look at that gorgeous very professional again smudge and budge proof once it's dry and then i can just take a little string or a ribbon and tie that on my basket and yeah i know it's a basket of transfers but doesn't this look fancy and professional and kind of give you a good feeling like you've been creative Okay, so let me set that aside. I've got, hopefully I have time for two more. This, I'm going to show you our permanent option. So here is a glass jar that, honestly, I don't remember where I got this. Um, I, I don't remember. I think you got that at Dollar Tree. You think I got that at Dollar Tree? One of those special products. Okay, this I pasted on. I pasted this on. I'm tired of it. Valentine's Day is over. I want to get rid of it and replace it. So I'm going to spray this with water. Remember, I told you they're smudge and budge proof. That's gone through a whole season that, of us that, grabbing yeah, that went through, and kisses and yeah. stuff out of it. That went through a month or more. And what did I do with my... Okay, so I'm just going to let that kind of soak in for a minute. Then I'm going to take, this is a paste scraper. It's just a hard plastic. It's got a beveled edge, and it helps me scrape this off. Um, if you didn't have one of these, you could use like a, the edge of a gift card or a credit card. And then I told you it was smudge and budge proof, semi-permanent, until you're ready to take it off. And I am now ready to take it off. And so I can scrape that off. just like that you could use anything a you, credit card yeah or credit a, card or a spatula and then i'm going to take 
a towel and get rid of all those little paste chunks. If I needed to, if there was any ghosting, I would take my board eraser and scrub that off. And now my surface is ready to go. Hey honey, I need some more uh, shop towels next time you're in the garage. Okay. So I'm gonna dry this off and I'm going to show you how we can do a permanent and do something permanent. So we're gonna do permanent with our ink. So our ink looks the same, but it says ink. This is our permanent version. And if you heat set it, it will become permanent. So let's see, which edge do I wanna do? How about, I'm gonna pull this one back out. This is the one we used. This is the one we used with our etching cream. So I'm going to lay this down. Oops. I'm going to kind of make sure it's snug because I want my, I need my ink to go all the way through. Okay. And our transfers are flexible, so it kind of goes around that corner really well. And I'm going to, I'm going to use our black ink. Now, our black, it applies just the same as our paste. It's a little bit thinner. And I'm just going to come at this in one direction. Again, applying it the same, but it is a different formula. And when I heat set it, it will be permanent. Now, when you heat set this, Normally, when you put it on glass, you like to do it in the oven. You have you you have you kind of have to do it in the oven. Okay. Because well, so. What about that plastic seal at the top? I would pull that off. That oh, comes okay. off. It comes off. Yeah, it comes off. So to heat set this, what I would do, I would again, I'd take off this little plastic ring that kind of helps seal the jar, and I would put it in a cold oven once I have. Once I have my ink on, once my ink is dry, I would put it in a cold oven and crank it up to 350. Look at that. It kind of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix that right now. It kind of, was a little funky on the finish. There we go. So anyway, back to back to heat setting. Um, put it in the oven, crank it up to 350 degrees. Wait until the, your oven gets to temperature. Once it's at 350, start your timer for about 45 minutes. At 45 minutes, turn off your oven, let it completely cool down, and it will be heat set. Permanent, permanently heat set. Of course, if you scrape at it with a knife, it's going to come off. So. I'm going to dry this. But you know what? I'm running out of time and I want to show you one more thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to let this dry and I'm not going to try to take the plastic off now. I'm going to let this dry really, really well. Then I'm going to pick one of these, lay it over and ink that on top of it then i'm going to let it completely dry like overnight 24 hours let it completely dry you must let it dry because if you put it in the oven and it's wet it's going to all run down so completely dry and heat set it like i just said and then this will be completely permanent i could i could do permanent on the base on the label and then he just heat set it and then come back in and use paste over the top of it. And then that part would be, that part would be reusable. You just couldn't scratch it too hard to get it off. Okay. I want to show you one more thing, which is awesome to me. I did not know this. Okay. You can, you can chalk on vinyl, like your Cricut vinyl. 
So if, if you had something that you didn't want to actually paste on or it just didn't work, but you could put a sticker on or your cars, any of our transfers, you want to make a little sticker for your car window, you can do it on vinyl. This is, this is permanent vinyl, but I'll, I'll give you a hint. I tried it with the, the removable vinyl and it worked just fine. Okay, so let's do one of these on a piece of vinyl. Now this is, doesn't have to be Cricut. This was the Paper Studio. I think that's Hobby Lobby. Again, this is permanent vinyl, not heat transfer vinyl, but just the, the stick-on vinyl. You can use it with um, the Cricut brand, the Cricut brand permanent vinyl, or you can use it with, what's that other company? The 651. Uh, Orcal. Orcal 651, any of the permanent vinyls. Sorry. But again, if you're br Cicer, Cicer, Scissor, Sizer. Okay, again, sticky, sticky, sticky on a smooth surface. So I'm going to fuzz, fuzz, fuzz this. Show you how it works. Hopefully I have enough time. Center. Four minutes. Okay. I can do it. I can do it. If I didn't have these strings, you know, when I when I pull these up, it's leaving. It's leaving strings. I'm doing this upside down so I can center it a little better. I think. Okay. It may not be per it may not be perfectly centered, but you're all going to forgive me because. Time is of the essence. So I'm going to use the white ink this time. Same thing. Using ink on vinyl. Scrape off the excess. Side. If you're interested, please they can type in the word yes. labels. If you if you are interested in purchasing any of these labels, I have a cart link set up. If you type labels, I told you it would grab it would grab tight. I'm pulling up the pulling up the vinyl. Just trying to pull up the stencil. So if you type that did grab. I needed to have fuzzed it a little bit more, but it's working. Okay, so I just did I just did the outline for you. And I'm going to lay that vinyl back down on its backer. Okay. Now, to heat set this, I'm going to use an iron. So, let me get fingerprints on it. Let me give this a quick dry. And show you how you can heat set this. And I do have ink all over my fingers. But this is an option. This is an awesome option. Let's scrape off some of that ink that I'm smearing around. Okay, so heat pad, parchment paper. Iron on medium, and I'm just going to go over it. Don't go over it. Don't put too much heat on it, or you will end up. It'll, it'll, dis vinyl. it'll distort the vinyl. But you're just going to run that over, not solidly. Stop it for a moment. Go back over it again. Do it for a total of a minute or two in total, but maybe not all at once. And it will heat set, ooh, and that's hot, let it cool off. It will heat set that ink to your, to your vinyl. And then you can peel it off and you can stick that on anything you want. So, again, we hope you will follow us. Sorry, kind of rushed at the end. I wanted to show you all the things. So, again, here is our 
Here's our inked um, ink on glass. This is etching on glass with chalk over it. Vinyl, wooden tag, and our plastic container. So lots of different ways to use these transfers. If you're interested, type labels in the comments. We'll send you a bot. And if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll look for them. Okay, I'm out of time. I'm over time. Bye-bye. Thanks.